The creative team behind Star Fox 64 obviously got much of its inspiration from Star Wars. The game is saturated with typical Star Wars elements, from the acrobatic starships to a gigantic mothership in the introduction to a Death Star-like assault against a shield-protected starbase. Star Wars wasn't the only influence during development, though. On the planet Katina, you will notice a shadow-casting mothership that makes for an uncanny resemblance to the film Independence Day. What struck us most from playing the 64-bit Star Fox was how much it had improved since the 16-bit original from about five years ago. The graphics were then considered revolutionary, but today they're almost painful to the eyes. Star Fox 64 is a graphical beauty, complete with reflections in water surfaces and fantastically dramatic explosions. The bosses you must defeat are equally impressive, both in size and design. Each boss has different vulnerabilities, and you have to figure out what part of them to defeat first, and sometimes how to avoid their attacks in the process. The game comes packed with a rumble pack, a wireless device that simply clicks into the bottom of your controller and provides force feedback when you are hit by the enemy. We found the rumble pack to be a letdown. The rumbles did not seem to vary in intensity. One would expect crashing into the ground would cause the rumble pack to thrash furiously, but the effect is no more than a slight rumble. At least the unit is aptly named. The rumble pack causes a major problem for owners of the popular interactive game shark controller. You can't pause if the rumble pack is in use. We opted to avoid the rumbler entirely, and quite honestly, the game doesn't need the rumbles to provide the action. Although the challenge level is not too high, you will have to practice several times before beating the game on the hard level. Although Star Fox is a good game, we found several areas for nitpicking. The cinematic sequences are too short, without substantive plot, and hardly as immersive as a good movie. The cinema scenes are often nothing more than a scene showing you flying towards the next level. The graphics, while well rendered, are not very detailed. The levels in outer space lack depth in the stars, and the skies look more like dotted backgrounds than immersive Star Wars battle scenes. Okay, this is a silly complaint, but the play control is something that may frustrate everyone. Targeting your enemy is difficult, even with the homing device. Some enemies, like the Star Wolf team for example, must be defeated without the homing device or charged laser blast. One major flaw that could be avoided is the somersault's varying response rate. Occasionally, you'll press the buttons necessary to perform a somersault, but nothing will happen. To avoid this, make sure you press the control stick all the way down in a lightning quick motion. Frankly, it makes no sense to involve the control stick in somersault operations when the stick is already utilized in basic movement. Sometimes, the game will think you're merely pressing down when you're actually pressing down and a C button to do a somersault. In the case of Star Fox, though, control problems are easy to overcome. Persistent players should beat the game on hard in a week or so. However, some players may not even know how to access the hard level. The hard level is determined by the path you take to the planet of Venom. Some paths do not become available until you meet certain requirements. For info on how to beat the hard level, stay tuned to Flights, and we'll give you the whole scoop and nothing but the scoop later in this episode. The bottom line on Star Fox, though, is that you should rent it, beat it, and save your money.